Greetings, Crad here. In this video I'm going to talk to you about the ZT-0600, which is a collaboration between Zero Tolerance and R.J. Martin. It won the Blade Show of 2012's Collaboration of the Year Award. Um, this is a, a limited edition piece coming out from Zero Tolerance. It's uh, limited to about a thousand pieces. Based on what we saw from the 0560 CBCF, uh, run. There could be models uh, numbered a little bit higher than that, uh, potentially due to um, some of them being considered blemishes and whatnot. So it's more of an approximate number than anything. So this is a, a flipper model. Um, my flipper skills aren't really the greatest. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just getting into flipper knives, having uh, always been into waved Emersons before. I'm finding out that. Um, I, I want to use the meaty part of my finger to flip, but if I if I use the tip of my finger and press down and in, uh, knives tend to flip a little bit better. So this is um, a pretty large knife. It's based on R.J. Martin's Q36 model, but it is larger than that. The Q36 has a blade length of 3.85, I believe which is uh, slightly larger than the 3.75 of the big bodega and it puts this knife firmly in between the Emerson Super Roadhouse and the Emerson Super CQC8 4.2, 4.25, 4.3 so it's a, a very large knife uh, you definitely notice you have it uh, it doesn't bother me at all, I, I rather enjoy carrying large knives so this is right up my alley The recurve uh, going in with some deep belly and a drop point tip uh, came out really well. It's a really sexy blade shape. Uses uh, Carpenter Steel CTS uh, B75P, I believe. Let's uh, check that out. Yep, B75P, which is um, more or less VG42. The company that made BG42 Latrobe, I believe it was, uh, they were bought up by Carpenter. They vacuum melted BG42, but this is a crucible steel. So it's a, a powder steel, which offers a really great consistency throughout the blade. It's a very high performing steel. Uh, should have great edge retention. And I have used this knife to um, help unpack my house and break down boxes and everything like that. And it's uh, performed very well with no noticeable loss of sharpness. The 3D machine handles came out really great. Solid titanium, um, solid tie backspacer, really beefy backspacer. It has um, a section here that is carved out with uh, two openings here so you can run a paracord lanyard through there. It has a titanium pocket clip which I think came out really great. I really like this uh, style and I hope that it is a sign of things to come for zero tolerance knives. Um, I don't really care for deep carry pocket clips and um, the pocket clips that they're, they're generally using on their knives um, they're kind of plain. They don't really do justice to the rest of the knife. They're, uh, they seem out of place, but not this one. This one is excellently, excellent, excellently done. I can't talk. I want to use uh, two different words at the same time, which doesn't work out. Uh, here you can see the stainless steel insert that they have milled into the handle here. It is replaceable, so you would unscrew that, pop that out, put a new one in. That's also the part that has the detent ball. Um, it's in the replaceable section of the handle. So um, I've been noticing that as I get into flippers, the detent is a really important part of it. If the detent is too stiff, um, it doesn't want to let the, the blade fly out of the handle at all. And if the detent is too loose, then the blade will come out before you actually have enough pressure behind it and you'll get sort of a half open blade. But um, the detent is very well done on this. Um, as long as I, you know, push on the flipper the proper way, I can uh, get it to open up um, 
this is hard to do in camera. Obviously, I would never normally hold my hand like this. But you can get it to open up uh, even with the blade um, fully up and down, fully uh, vertical. It has a very impressive blade stock here. Uh, the specs that I read say that it's 0 0.19, which uh, interestingly enough are the same specs that I read for the Emerson Humvee K, but this is noticeably thicker than the blade stock of the Emerson Humvee K. So uh, I'm definitely getting the wrong numbers for one of these two knives, and I don't have any um, precise measuring tools to tell you which one it is. But yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive when you have a blade stock thick enough to make a, an Emerson Humvee K look anemic. It has um, a milled out area on the front of the titanium slab here for this uh, inlaid carbon fiber piece. It's uh, really beautiful, really smooth. There's no pitting in the carbon fiber, it's definitely some high quality carbon fiber. And it's also used to hide the screws that actually hold the frame together. You can, you can see the back of them here, just barely. The diamond texture, or uh, triangle texture, I guess, that they, they use uh, on these 3D machined handles is really great. It offers grip um, without being too aggressive. Uh, it feels really great. It's not going to damage your pockets. Another thing, um, the section that they, they remove here to make the frame lock possible is on the exterior. Normally I prefer it to be on the interior, interior because uh, on certain knives it's not very smoothly finished and that, that piece there can uh, end up doing some damage to your pocket clips. but. It's very smoothly finished on the 0600, and I, I don't foresee that being a problem at all. Uh, there is no jimping on the flipper, but it is a very large flipper. You're definitely going to get a lot of purchase on it. Um, comparison, let's see here. The flipper on the 777 is much smaller. It does have jimping. The D10 on the 777 is uh, very much so perfect. Um, by the time that it, it you've built up enough pressure to release the blade, the blade is always going to come 100% open and uh, fully engage the lockup. The blade is much heavier on this knife, and the detent is maybe a little bit weaker, at least on this specific uh, one that I have in my hands here. But it's uh, still it still flips very well, very excellently here. Uh, much like with the Bodega, uh, if you happen to get your finger right here, um, it's not quite fully sharpened, so you're not going to hurt yourself. Like if if you think you're you know, trying to choke up on on the knife like this for some reason, um, maybe absentmindedly or something, you're you're not at a great risk of injuring yourself, which I think is a good thing. Uh, it wouldn't take much to go in and fully sharpen that if that is something that you wanted to do though. There's a, a little bit of soft jimping right here. I'm not the type that thinks that it's super important to have jimping here, but if, um, or anywhere on the knife really. I do uh, kind of like it on the flipper when uh, I see that there. But if, um, Jimping is something that you look for. There is some nice uh, soft jimping here. It's not going to cause any pain. And I like that they didn't put any jimping here. That's a problem I had with the 0560 uh, CBCF that I own, and I assume it's the same way on the other ones. Uh, if you're pushing on the flipper all day and just playing around and flipping it, you know, every time your, your finger's going to run into that sharp jimping that that knife had, and uh, it gets really uncomfortable after a little while. So this is uh, a knife that is really great. Um, they're, they're in the middle of their run right now, so you might still be able to find one. Definitely keep an eye out for the 0600. Thanks for watching.